What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at what happens when you want to rotate a view. You know, you might have a particular view that you need to call out, make an enlarged floor plan or something like that. And you've got something like this, where you've got a, a 45 degree angle, you've got a non 90 degree angle building, or a piece of a building at least, where you need to get a different angled view. We're gonna go over that in this video. But before we get into it, I do want to say if at any point in this video you happen to learn something or you just like the video, like my hat, anything like that, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Jumping right into it now, we're looking at just a basic floor plan, nothing special here. But what I want to do is get a, a lar enlarged floor plan, a call out here that does actually match my angle of the building. Because I don't have a 90 degree angle, I can't just simply draw my call out, move on and be done with it. Now I will say this is very simple and there's not a whole lot to do and it's something simple that you know how to do but I want to go over the right way to do it and some other ways that I've seen people try to do it and just the fact that it doesn't work that way. So let's go ahead and draw our call out in the view tab, call out, don't need to save. I will then draw my call out here. Again it's going to be square, nothing special about that. but. What do we do next? We want to get it rotated. We want to change the way it looks. Well, at the top left here, we actually see a rotate. And I can click and I can just start to rotate this. And, you know, I can get pretty close. But I actually don't want to do that quite yet because I want to be more precise. I happen to be a precise person. Revit is a precise program, thankfully. And it allows us to be precise with the specific tools that we have. So I've got a sheet here. So let's go ahead and put this view on the sheet. So there's my view on the sheet and obviously it looks the exact same as it did in my floor plan. It's not angled the way we want, maybe because we do actually want it straight up and down. It's a lot easier to dimension, it's a lot easier to make notes and annotations that way. So how would we do it? Well, there's a number of ways. <laughs> there's a number of ways you can do it, there's only one real way that would work correctly. So let's look at that first. Uh, the easiest way here really is to just grab this and then if you know your angle, and I assume you do, you, you're tracking that angle throughout the, your building and your project, that you take the boundary line of this view and you simply hit rotate and then put in your angle and change it here. And so I know mine is 45 and I can do it just like that. And it, again, now it's very simple for me to easily push and pull the edges of this view and get exactly what I want as far as this enlarged floor plan goes. Okay, that's great. And so let's look back at my floor plan and make sure it looks right. Well, it looks great. That's exactly what I want because I just want it to be around the boundary of this area. Now I'm going to undo all that actually. And we can see what this looks like if we do it a different way. So I'm going to go back to my sheet here. And I've seen this done before where you're actually within the boundary of the view and you can just, it's, you might think of this as the same way as editing the boundary of the view and and you are correct, it is. But the thing to be aware of is that this does not take into account rotating because this isn't rotating the view, it's just rotating the boundary. So I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees and we're gonna make it look basically the same as we had before, like we wanted you know, properly bounding these restrooms here. And once I do that, I'm still, I still have this at an angle. So if you don't want to change the angle, that's something you can do you'd actually have to go into the boundary of the view itself and then just adjust where these lines are bounding the view. And you know, keep in mind you can get this, you can make this as weird as you want if you want to include these rooms here, you can do that just fine. Trim it like that. I can get all these rooms and make this a weird looking angled view if you want. Of course you have to <laughs> properly finish the boundary line. There we go. So you can make it look like this, but until you actually rotate outside of the view boundary and physically rotate the view like just like in this dialog now if i simply rotate the edge of this view or select the edge of the view and then rotate everything again we can see what happens so i choose the 45 degrees and we can notice that looks very weird and why does that look very weird well <laughs> like before choosing this edge and then rotating will rotate the model in a sense within the view. Whereas I specifically edited the boundary and the boundary is actually different than the edge of the view. If you can kind of picture that in your mind, this boundary is different than the edge of the view in that if I rotate the edge of the view, 
I'm rotating where that model ends up rotationally. So if I go back into my boundary here, this is just editing what I see. It's just simply the crop box, if you will. It's not considered that necessarily, but it's the, the view crop. And so all that work was kind of for naught, unfortunately, but I can simply just come in here and rotate this 90 degrees or 45 degrees if I want, and I can get the same result, but I can just save myself so much trouble if I just do it right the, the first time, save myself a lot of trouble that way. So it does work this way, but you know, it would just be easier if I did it right the first time instead of having to essentially do the same thing twice and edit the boundaries here and there and you know, because, you know, there it is. I've got my 90 degrees. I've, I've rotated it to where I want. It, it looks good, but I just, I went to way too much trouble. So it is, it is very simple. And so the thing to be aware of is that you do need to rotate the actual view boundary, not like, not the crop box of the view. And that can, that can also be done here. I can also rotate it here as well. So let me make this square again so things look a little more normal and we can understand it a little better. There, we've got my square back now. And I want to go ahead and put this back to where it was originally. So there we go. If I go back to my level one, I can see it here. And just like before at the very beginning of this video, we can clearly see there's a rotate option up here. And I can click that and I can just start to rotate this around very simply. And, you know, the, the reason I don't like doing this necessarily is that if you have any other angle that is, let's say, not 45 degrees or not 90 degrees or something like that, then this will be difficult to get precise. And you know, you can just think of that from obvious reasons. I can't. I don't have any dimensions or anything here. But it is nice if you can see that as I get to this 45 degrees, it does end up snapping for me. So that's nice. So I can leave that there. I can readjust my boundary this way. I can go back to the sheet and see where it ends up. And that's again, that's what I want. So you can use the rotate tool itself. I'm a more of an advocate of doing that because I can physically control that angle right there very easily instead of having just, you know, willy nilly just picking this rotate. Because if I don't have anything that's 45 degrees or 90 degrees, then it's going to be more difficult for me to get that more precise. So that's a pretty simple video on showing you how to rotate these views and make them 90 degrees, a little easier to work with, with in enlarged floor plans, things like that. It does apply to really any type of view that is considered a call out. They do act the same, whether it be an elevation section, whatever. These call outs will function the same rotationally. So I sure hope you enjoy this video. If you did happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also, please consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. It really helps me out a lot. I just surpa surpassed 1,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you all enough who have taken the time to watch my videos, spend time, hopefully learn something, and did end up subscribing. I thank you all very much. Hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.